Welcome back to Most Amazing. I'm your host, Taylor McWaters, you're you, and here are the top 10 dark photos from history that the government tried to bury, but nope, old Taylor found them. Let's do it. Kicking off our list at number 10, the reindeer gift. We'll turn the clocks back to 1941, right off the hop. When the Germans were attacking the Soviet Union, it was of course one of the biggest attacks in history. Britain and the United States had to send over weapons, supplies, anything really just to keep them afloat, just to keep them in the fight. Now they sent these supplies through the Arctic Circle, that was the only route, but of course it was littered with U-boats, you know, war stuff. So thankfully the British HMS Trident was there to watch the waters, and in turn the Soviets were able to fight on. As a gift, as a thank you rather, the Soviets sent the captain of the Trident, they sent him a live reindeer. That the British, of course, had to accept because it was ill-mannered if you don't. So they had to keep a six foot tall, real life living reindeer on a submarine. Must be comfortable, awesome. Imagine the smell. Her name was Pollyanna and they brought her on board through a torpedo tube. She was tiny, she's the cutest little thing. She was a crew member for six weeks, which is honestly hilarious because you know some of those guys got way too attached, you know for sure. She slept better than most, if I'm being honest, she shared her room in the captain's quarters. Again, imagine the smell. I don't know, is it worth it? I've always wanted a baby goat growing up, so this is kind of the closest thing. I'm jealous, I'm weirdly jealous. Number nine, Stalin Photoshop. Deep fakes are getting out of hand. I have no idea what's real or what's fake anymore. To be honest, I'm not even Taylor. I'm actually Olivia doing a list right now, but it's been deep faked so well that you believe it. Modern technology is really making it hard to tell what's real and what's not, but it goes back. Back in 1939, a photo of Stalin was published and he looks normal, he actually looks kinda great. Some would say he looks way too good, you know what I mean? He was touching up photos as far back as 1939, just airbrushing, just digitally removing all those zits and stuff, like really, that far back? But even if you got a photo with Stalin, there's a chance that you, yourself, would be digitally removed. Like Nikolai Yitzhov, for example, the leader of the NKVD. He was in a photo with Stalin, but around 1937, Nikolai was responsible for orders that had over one million people arrested, so it wasn't ideal to be in a photo with Nikolai at the time. So he was denounced, imprisoned, and he died in 1940. So Stalin had him digitally erased and replaced in a photo. That's pretty hilarious. I don't know, this man was ahead of his time via Photoshop. How did he do it? How did they do it? No one knows. Number eight, Bill Clinton and Monica Lewinsky. Nice, I remember this one. I heard about this on LimeWire. That was cool. Heard about that at full volume. This was a huge presidential scandal. Back when you, you know, didn't happen every other week and stuff, this was a big deal. It was 1998 and Clinton's White House intern Monica Lewinsky was 22 years old at the time. Yeah, young. When you think back to all this old history, you're like, oh, they were this. No, very young, extremely young. They had a from 1995 to 1997, despite what LimeWire told us. Lewinsky said she hooked up with Bill nine different times at the White House, and apparently, according to her schedule, Hillary Clinton was at the White House for at least seven of those times. She's like, what's going on in there, huh? Is that my... Who is that? Number seven, adhesive bras. We'll liven this up a little bit with some vintage history that's it's kind of funny, it's pretty funny. Let's talk about sticky bras, shall we? What a mess this was, oh my. Back in 1949, Life Magazine released an article that caught everybody's attention, obviously. This was news, this was like a new technology that was being announced. It was May 16th, 1949, and the article read, for 5,000 years, clothes have been draped, tied, buttoned, pinned, and buckled on the human form. This year, for the first time in history, drum roll, they will be glued on. What in the world? How? This is witchcraft. How did that happen? Just one, two, that's it? That's easy. Inventor Charles Langs changed the game, or he thought he did, in 1949. He made these bra cups that would stick to you with adhesive. This, you know, special glue. This special glue. This specific adhesive was promised to leave behind no residue, it was supposed to be painless, yet at the same time, stay glued on even if you were to jump into a pool from a 10 foot diving board. That was the sell. Yeah, well that's not true, that's definitely not true. Well Langs ended up selling the company to Textron later on and the product ultimately failed. Number six, nuclear sight list. All right, back to the, you know, back to the dark stuff. Here on Most Amazing, we love lists, right? I'm not sure if you can tell. Smash that thumbs up, hit subscribe, yada yada, we love it. But apparently the US government also fancies a list or two. Who thought? Back when Obama was still running the show, a report was delivered to Congress, or rather it was supposed to be. The 266 page report featuring, you know, every nook and cranny about the US nuclear program. It was released publicly on the government printing office's website in draft form. 
draft form. Couldn't have been easier. Just a casual PDF that shows us maps with stockpiled fuel used for nuclear warheads. Awesome. Right next to your resume. Imagine that. So convenient. How does this even happen? I thought this type of stuff could never happen, right? Well, MIT professor John M. Dutch said that these screw ups do, of course, happen and it's normal. And this one here isn't a serious breach. I mean, it certainly sounds serious, but okay. We'll just have to trust the government. Number five, UFOs in the ocean. This video here was leaked in the last couple of years. You've probably seen it, hopefully not. This would be a great day. The footage itself was recorded in 2019 in San Diego. Now the Pentagon has since of course confirmed its authenticity and the UAP, the unidentified aerial phenomenon here, is sphere shaped and it's flying at extremely high speeds. There's no exhaust, no propulsion system whatsoever. It's just a metal ball whipping by San Diego and now, we're questioning our beliefs, so that's fun. The sphere vanished into the water afterwards, into the ocean, and then was never seen ever again. Number four, radar footage. Now normally when we see leaked footage, be it of UAPs or leaked documents, whatever, it's always the worst quality. Like that one, not the best, right? Not quite 4K. It's hard to believe when military footage is poor quality, right? Like how can we see photos of black holes and not even have a photo of a UAP yet, right? What's going on here? Well, Jeremy Corbell, he's here to help. Jeremy? What if he just walked in? That would be crazy. He's not here. That's insane. Jeremy took to Twitter in May 2021 sharing footage of US Navy ships being swarmed by UFOs. Like more than one. Sorry, UAPs. We're not going to call them that anymore. Now this time we have radar footage and that's pretty sweet. That's different. It came from the Combat Information Center aboard the USS Omaha. The 46 second clip was originally recorded July 15th, 2019. You can even hear people in the background reacting to what's happening in real time. You hear panic in their voices. These military personnel in the background, you can overhear them talking about how fast the objects are moving on the radar. So seems very believable this time, right? It's not just a grainy footage. It's like a live reaction kind of. And if he's spooked, we're spooked, right? Number three, Watergate. I have to include Watergate, right? It's one of the biggest scandals in US history. Right in the middle of 1972, there were five men who were all arrested for breaking into the Democratic National Committee headquarters at the Watergate Hotel in Washington, DC. It was clear that they intended on bugging the place, right? It was fishy, it was obvious, they looked like and spy kids, right? They were up to no good. Now, as the year went on, the election came closer and closer, and all of a sudden, out of the woodwork comes this anonymous source who fed information to Washington Post that the Watergate bugging incident was a massive campaign of political spying and sabotage kicked off by none other than President Nixon himself. It was kicked off by his re-election and directed by officials of the White House. It was a whole planned thing. Now, despite this information leak and it being reported to the news, Nixon was still re-elected. Now these men were clearly linked to a fundraising group for Nixon, but his administration just kept denying any involvement, right? That's the key. Deny, deny, deny. It wasn't until later that year in 1972 when reporters Carl Bernstein and Bob Woodward, they came forward and exposed everything. Now we got the truth. They exposed the administrator's role in the entire scandal, how they had an inside source, an FBI agent named Mark Felt. It was a whole thing. This ultimately led to Nixon resigning in 1974, the first ever president to do so. Yeah, that's how you know you got caught when you have to resign. Know what I mean? Number two, shadow brokers. Back in August 2016, a group named the Shadow Brokers were the talk of the town. And with that name, how can you not be, right? The shadow brokers would steal cyber weapons from an NSA hacking unit and then proceed to sell them online to the highest bidder. Now this sounds made up. This sounds like it's from a movie. This is crazy, right? Now these tools, these tools in question, these cyber weapons, they've been used by many countries and many not so great sounding schemes. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea, you name it, these cyber attacks can happen anywhere, right? The 2019 ransomware cyber attack, that's one example. This incident was connected to the shadow brokers. So whoever this mysterious group is, it still remains a mystery and still sounds made up as sh it sounds like a DC Comics villain. It's insane. And finally, number one, motorized roller skates. We'll end on a fun one because, you know, why not? This last one they've been working on for a very long time and we still can't crack it, right? This is the craziest thing I've ever seen working on this channel, so I gotta end with it. Motorized roller skates. What a nightmare this would be. Imagine if this worked out. Even Elon Musk would see this and be like, no, that's crazy. 
This photo was taken at the Sunoco station in Hartford, Connecticut. Now context aside, this is an odd one. A guy with a briefcase is filling up at the gas station and he's wearing roller skates. That would look bad today. You would have SWAT teams rolling up if you saw that, right? It's 1956 and that futuristic looking man right there is Mike Dreschler. Now at the time he was working for a Detroit skate company, but he was very close to gas powered skates. They would have cost around $250, which today is around $2,400. And it's max speed was 17 miles an hour. Again, imagine that in the closing act of like a Mission Impossible movie. That's crazy. Now obviously the public wasn't supposed to see this. They feared that it would encourage folks to get creative on their own and you know, launch their way to work. So yeah, don't make rocket skates with gasoline. Thanks. I'm Taylor McWatters. You're you. Those are the top 10 dark voters from history the government tried to bury. I'll be back for a part two. I feel it. Hopefully. Hit that thumbs up. Bye.